the Toronto Raptors are going to the NBA Finals. I repeat, the Toronto Raptors are going to the NBA Finals. Woo! We debate if the Warriors need Durant to come back, whether Kawhi should guard Steph, and we make our prediction. And we'll discuss Giannis walking out of the Game 6 press conference. It's Monday, May 27th. The start of starts now! Good evening, Sweet World, and welcome to the Starters, presented by Jack Daniels, Old Number 7, and Tennessee Honey. I'm Jay Skeets, alongside me, as always, Tass Mellis. We got the Aussie back, Lee Ellis, and over yonder, that's the bearded one, that's Trey Kirby. Hey! Hey, hey yo. yo! Trey, what's up? Well, I'm here at the internet looking for your best tweets at hashtag the starters. And guys, Toronto won game six on Saturday, so we've got our finals matchup set. It's the Warriors versus the Raptors. Should be fun on the court because it's already starting to be fun off the court. Because as we all know, Drake is a big time Raptors fan. He's sure to be going crazy in the finals, just like he has been throughout this entire playoffs. But apparently that's a bit of a problem because the guys from Smash Mouth aren't having it. Tweeting out earlier, yo Drake, when the ball's in play, sit the bleep down. That ain't gonna fly in Oakland. Hey now, you're a Smash Mouth and you're beefing with Drake. And that brings us to today's question. It's a poll on our Twitter page at the starters. I never thought I would ask this. What you got, Drake or Smash Mouth? The Raptors musician fan versus the Warriors musician fan. Bangers versus bangers, memes versus memes. Who are you gonna pick? It's impossible. I honestly don't know which way this one's gonna go, but hit up our Twitter page at the starters and vote. What you got, Drake or Smash Mouth? Oh my goodness. Get your votes in now, we'll check the results later. Drake or Smash Mouth? All right. It looks like we got some days to fill. Yeah, we do. That's exactly right. On tonight's show, we're actually gonna start to preview and predict the NBA Finals. We only have, what, four days, so we better get started now. We're gonna talk about Giannis getting up and leaving the Game 6 press conference a little earlier than expected. And we got Lili's very solid play, a little twist to this one, but let's start. Give me some Raptor news, Trey. Let's make it simple. <laughs> Thanks to 27, 17, and 7 from Kawhi Leonard. Four more threes from Fred Van Vliet and the biggest smile of Kyle Lowry's career. The Raptors won game six on Saturday. The win completed their conference finals comeback against the Bucks, and it sends Toronto to their first finals appearance in franchise history. The city has been politely raging for days. <laughs> no arrests! But how are you guys feeling after the biggest win that your team has ever seen? Hey, let me get now. You go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> My heart is quite full. Uh, yeah, watching those tens of thousands of people get up on buses, get up on cop cars, but no arrests. Right. Uh, they were there until <laughs> 2 and 3 in the morning, mobbing the cars of players as they came out from underneath the Scotiabank Arena. Yeah, it was just beautiful to watch. It, it, it was a really resilient bunch on the floor. Those dudes uh, get down 15 in the third quarter and get down the game before that. I've never seen such a tough-minded Raps team. Right. And obviously, those 20,000 people in the arena, the 50,000 people outside of it, are just proud. And that's what's going on here as well. These dudes wearing red. Yeah. Uh, that's what's happening. Yeah, I know. We didn't plan this amazingly. But uh, I was one of the lucky ones to be in the arena to, to watch this. Uh, Tass, unfortunately, had some flight problems. Catch the uh, Drop podcast for that story <laughs> or check out his Twitter account. But I was in there and it was wild to me because I'm sitting there as a lifelong Raptors fan. And beside me, you know, it was just perfect. There was like three like 14 or 15 year olds and they were into the game obviously diehard raps fans they're going crazy and it was surreal for me thinking like that's basically what i fell in love with basketball around that age right around when the raptors came into existence in 95 going to my first game and like when you're watching a game like this and the raptors are pulling this out and you're like whoa they're gonna actually do this and go to the finals this is really happening you just start to sort of revisit all the great Raptors moments from your past and the bad ones as well. And you start ripping through like your first Damon, Damon Stoudemire jersey and your first game at the <laughs> Sky Dome that they played in and stuff. And then going and traveling to games and going to other games. Games ones I would always fly home to and they would lose. And so you just start thinking of all these crazy moments and that building was electric. I'm excited for the rest of the fans out there that maybe don't catch a ton of Raptors fans to get to experience the, the fans and the team in the finals against, you know, the mighty dynasty that it looks to be the Warriors. What you said just then about the fans who have been through the bad and the good, I think was really summed up by Kyle Lowry's reaction because he's been there and this team's been very, very successful, but there's been so much heartbreak along the way. He knows it as well as anybody right. because of those losing those game ones and then losing game seven to the Nets back, you know, four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. And he knows what it's like. This city is desperate for a winner, desperate for someone to celebrate. And for Lowry to have been such an important part of that victory in this whole series, I think was really special. And you could see just the emotion 
emotions overtook him and so many people felt that same way about the Raptors because, let's be honest, this franchise in some ways almost was extinct back in the mid-2000s two, really yeah. there when, when Vince Carter was said, I'm out of here, I'm gone, and then Chris Bosh was there but then he also left. People, you know, there was a stigma attached to that Raptors team. And a lot of fans, I mean, you guys know as well, a lot of Toronto Raptors fans feel that there's always been something from the NBA. They don't want the Raptors in the finals. They don't want them to be successful. Well, that's all put to bed now. That You can't ever talk about that anymore. No, because right. the Raptors are on now the biggest stage with home court advantage and a chance to win an NBA championship. It's something that honestly didn't look like that would ever happen there for a long, long time. Yeah, it was a long, long time. It's been 24 <laughs> years. I was surprised to see that other franchises hadn't gone to their NBA Finals in a lot longer time period because it sure feels like the longest time period in <laughs> NBA history to get to the NBA Finals yeah. after everything that happened at the beginning from that cavernous Sky Dome where they were playing in a baseball slash football stadium where it didn't look like a basketball team should ever, ever lay a court down there. So, you know, ownership changing. Uh, that was a big part along with Vince Carter and solidifying that. And now it's a basketball town. And, uh, you know, we were talking about today, and maybe those hockey heads are starting to turn a little bit. I'd say probably not, but <laughs> I'd say a lot of those 12, 13, 14, Absolutely. 15 year olds are attaching themselves to this team, this brand, because it's, it's an A list organization now. Uh, and it wasn't for a long time, but things turned around. You know, the Kyle Lowry. He's right on that marker, along with DeMar DeRozan. You yeah, know, yeah. That, those were the two guys that really turned things around, along with Masai Ujiri. And uh, now it's world class. And it's how they did it in this game six, and again, even think back to game five. Suffocating team defense down the stretch. I mean, this defense was elite, especially as the game went on and just locking up the books, box and making them look a little shook, I thought. And then you had Kawhi. I mean, let, let's get to Kawhi. The only reason we're even talking about the Raptors in the finals is because of this guy. He won them series. He won games within that series. You know, the load management paid off. Yep. And Masai Ujiri has got to be a happy man here today, of course, as well, because he made three just swing for the fences type of moves over the last little while. Firing Coach Casey after obviously a very successful season in terms of regular season success and bringing in Nick Nurse, then trading DeRozan and Pirtle and a pick for Kawhi Leonard and Danny Green. And then at the deadline, not done, not mm -hmm. content with that, but making the move for Marcus Saul, who obviously had, you know, he had a huge shot in this game six, played great against uh, Embiid in the 76ers series. So he makes that move at the deadline, trading a couple guys, trading some of your depth. And another guy in JV that the fans love, just mm -hmm. like DeRozan. I mean, these were bold, you know, risky moves, and they all three of them you know, ultimately paid off here to get them into the finals. I mean, Kawhi, Kawhi's obviously the big one because <laughs> the Spurs in some ways traded him to Toronto out of spite as well. It's like, no one wants to go to Toronto. All right, you go up to Toronto. And he, instead of uh, looking at that as a situation where I'm only here for a year and then I'm done, he's turned that into an incredible situation for him. And whether or not he stays, nobody knows that for right now. But he's come along and embraced not just the team, but the city and the franchise and everybody who, who supports the Raptors. And I think that's really important because, again, for so long, players who hadn't played in Toronto were like, I don't want to go to Canada. I don't want to go. And Lowry and DeRozan, and of course, Bosch and Vince, those guys before that. But they're, they're really saying, like, this is a city and this is a team that is so well run and, and such a great organization that you can have success here. And it's not like you're, you're out in the wilderness in the middle of nowhere. You're actually playing for an NBA team, even yeah. though it's in a, a non-US city or non-USA city. Yeah, but you also take on the identity of your star player. I think that's what we're seeing with these Raptors through this playoff run is when they're down 15, you know, previous iterations of the squad, I mean, it would be over. It would be done. They would curl up into a ball and everybody would cry, including the fans. They don't do that now because Kawhi Leonard, he's already won championships. He won finals MVPs. He was around one of the greatest franchises ever. Mm. He's, 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 in his mind, he's like, I'm expecting to do this. And I'm excited, like, look, Everyone that saw this game, saw the celebration after, all the people outside, it sort of did appear that the Raptors just won a championship. Yep. I get that, because people were that excited, and it felt like they exercised some of these demons. But they're, they're not done. A guy like Kyle, Kawhi Leonard, excuse me, is far from done. He thinks he can go out and beat the Warriors along with his other guys. He's going to need help, Lowry and Serge and all these guys. But he knows for sure that, they, that they're not done, in his mind at least. Because this is new to him, this idea of like, oh, wow, we just got to the finals? No, that's what I did all the time mm. for the most part with the Spurs. So mm. that's sort of like, again, I think that that helps not only the team but the rest of the fan base. You, you really start to believe. Sure, and this is another stepping stone because the, the DeMar Lowry iteration was good, uh, but Kawhi Leonard has taken them obviously up to another notch, and Lowry could smell that. You yeah. could see the way Lowry knew that, hey, I got to jump on this guy's back yeah. and, and get us to the finals where... 
Yeah, anything can happen. And remember when... Can it? We will shall see in predictions. When DeRozan got traded, you know, Lowry wasn't happy with that, you know, because it was his friend who got traded. So he had to sort of overcome that emotional uh, sort of attachment to his own teammate. For sure. We got lots more still to come on the show tonight. Four more days, too. We're going to start talking (laughs) about this NBA Finals. Warriors versus Raptors. Still sounds weird to say out loud, but we'll discuss and debate whether the Warriors truly need KD back to even beat the Raps. Don't go anywhere. The Starters is presented by Jack Daniels Old Number 7 and Tennessee Honey. Welcome back to the Starters. Time for an all-finals edition of True or False. Guys, Kevin Durant hasn't played since he strained his right calf against the Rockets on May 8th. And an update from the Warriors last week said Durant won't be ready for at least game one of the finals, possibly longer. Warriors haven't lost since KD went out, but they also haven't had to play against Kawhi Leonard yet. True or false? The Warriors can win without KD. True. It's true. Yeah. I do Sorry, yeah. It's true. Yeah. No, it's fine. It's fine. We can be biased, but let's be honest here. Uh, let, let's put on our basketball hats. They've got a ton of scoring, and, and this is far different than the Bucks scoring. Right. They got to guard everywhere now, and you can't build a wall against Steph Curry. You got to be chasing. So it's going to be very different. And for all the talk about Kawhi Leonard, Steph Curry is in a better groove, I'd say. He's putting up 36 through his last five games right. since Kevin Durant went down. So if they have the best score in this series, lights out. If they can't find a way to stop Steph. Yeah, I'm with you. With or without Durant, the Warriors are the favorites in the NBA Finals. Now, I think it makes it a little more interesting, especially even if he has to come back or does come back in like games two or game three or game mm. four and does that sort of take the Warriors out of, out of any sort of rhythm that they had. We know he's that talented and you can plug him in there and he's sort of like, you know, an insurance policy in a weird way for them. But does that mix things up a little bit? But with or without him, the way they're playing with everything running through Curry and Draymond taking his play to the next level, they're still the the favorites, and they can win four out of seven games against, I think, any team that would be coming yeah. out of the East. Well, of course, they've got the experience and the depth and the balance, yeah. and they've already proven that they can win without him by sweeping the Blazers and, of course, knocking off the Rockets as well without him there. But whether or not he comes back, you have to suspect he probably won't be 100%. Because, you know, usually an injury like this, if you come back, you want a game or two just to sort of get back into the flow. So exactly when the Warriors choose to bring him back, if they can bring him back at all, is going to be interesting because we've talked about it before. Like, let's say they go down two zero let's say the Raptors win these first two games then the Warriors feel they have to rush him back a little bit or if it is you know if they get the split here in Toronto do they go back to they maybe give him an extra day's rest because an injury like this if he does re-injure it you think it's probably going to wipe him out for the rest of the series so the 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 Warriors I guess are weighing up whether or not it's worth risking him back a little bit early to perhaps risk losing him or have to wait until he's 100% clear that's one of them good problems right right? yeah (laughs) with Kevin Durant it's great I I don't think he'll have any problem integrating really at all but yes he may have a slow game one Uh, but I find this uh, oh can they just recalibrate their best player yes they can recalibrate they've done it a bunch and they recalibrated in a lot of postseasons in the in their history that's true that's true and I will say despite them winning without Kevin Durant versus the Blazers remember those last three games they were down 17 points Mm -hmm. they were in a hole and then they flipped the switch and got back and got all those wins and so are the Raptors yeah who's gonna go down (laughs) but even the Rockets Warriors series a lot of those games in the final five minutes were five point games very very close now the experience comes through and they, they obviously got all those wins or enough wins to move on but big yeah. difference though is the Raptors defense versus the Blazers that's defense. yeah you it's know, night and day yeah the it Raptors really are a much better defensive team so if they build a little though I know you talked about on the drop this morning it's almost better for the Raptors to be behind or close because it's very hard for them to hold on to lead yeah nowadays. they play differently with the lead that's, <laughs> yeah. that's very true we'll see all right next one here Trey the Raptors were trailing the Sixers when Kawhi Leonard started guarding Jimmy Butler and the Raptors went on to beat the Sixers the Raptors were trailing the Bucks when Kawhi Leonard started guarding Giannis Antetokounmpo Raptors went on to beat the Bucks. So with Kevin Durant out to start the finals, got to ask guys, true or false, Kawhi Leonard should guard Steph Curry. Well, I say it's false. I uh, think it's false yeah, too. Yeah. You're going to you're gonna pick and choose your spots, but you yeah. can't have Kawhi chasing around Steph Curry and then for an entire game and then say, oh yeah, by the way, go get us 35 mm. to 40 on the other end. The big difference here is, you know, Giannis and Jimmy Butler, they're a bit bigger, a bit more physical, which is okay for Kawhi. But Steph, we know, I mean, it's impossible for anybody to sort of stay within him. He can dribble, he can shake you down and get that shot off at any time, which maybe wastes a little bit of Kawhi's best defense. So I think whoever does get that job, they have to try to stick with him. Maybe, you know, at some point, someone like a Norm Powell maybe has to come out just to stick with Steph. But it's whoever has that job, it's going to be virtually impossible so to who, stop so who do you put 
uh, Kawhi on to start this series then? If, it, if it's not Curry? Yeah, I mean, do you put him on Draymond play. with the hopes that you blow yeah. up sort of a Curry Draymond? I mean, you've got to, someone, there's got to be a body on Draymond because he was so good against mm -hmm. Portland, getting the rebounds, getting that ball out in transition and starting that break for them. So someone has to make sure they've got a body on him. But that's the thing. Draymond, I mean, he's a small big guy, if you know what I mean, a small power forward. So he's very agile at getting in and getting that ball. So someone has to keep a body on him. That's the thing with the Warriors. They've got so many different players that are very hard to defend. You're not going to stop one. So, or you're not going to stop multiple. Well, someone's going to get going. It's just you've got to pick your poison as to who and how they get their points. Yeah, we might see it later on in the series if things get dark for yeah. the Toronto Raptors. Uh, but I don't think you start him there because we're seeing Kawhi Leonard get rest throughout the games. You saw it in game six there. Three minutes left in the third quarter, he sits down. They're very, very aware of when Kawhi needs his rest. Yeah. So you got. I think you need to save his legs for the offensive end because I yeah. think I think he needs to be even better than he was in in, in round number three. I know it's crazy, right. but the Warriors are going to score better than the Bucks, and the guy who can score on the Raptors is Kawhi. I think he's going to get up to that 35 mark. And then the second thing, second reason why I think he should probably stay on Draymond or be more of a roamer is that Kyle Lowry is peak Kyle Lowry right now. He, he is he is the perfect annoying pest that will get in your shorts, and that's why I think he should go after Steph. <laughs> right. It's the perfect matchup for him in that way. There's not really another good matchup for him. Yeah, you can go hide Kyle Lowry, but what's the point? Right. I mean, you got a scorer in Kawhi. I think you, you unleash Kyle and, and tell him to go after Steph Curry. All right, let's get to the predictions. Let's see it. Where's everybody going? My goodness, what in the world is going on here? Come on. Uh, we got three of us up here taking Raptors in seven. Tass and myself, Trace jumping on board. That's right. I'm and, going to Toronto this week. I don't want to get in a fight with 100,000 Raptors. And, and Liam, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the okay. voice of reason here going Warriors in six. You don't seem happy about Warriors in six. Oh, he's just surrounded by three guys. <laughs> <laughs> and you want to cheer for the underdog to some extent, but you're, you're going Warriors ultimately. Too, too much fire. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the Warriors <laughs> should win. Right. <laughs> yes. I mean, they should. They but should. you said it. How how impressive can this defense continue to be yeah. for the Raptors? Obviously, they were they were locked in one of the better defenses defenses we saw in the postseason. You got Kawhi. You need him to be the best player in the series. Now that's up either against Curry or even Durant when he comes back. And then, will the Warriors what we saw them do against Harden? We saw them do against Lillard. Blitz them. Send multiple bodies. Get the ball out of your, that star player's hands. Will they do that for Kawhi? And if they do, can the supporting players, your Lowry's and your Siakam's and, and even Danny Green, can he hit a corner three? Mm. Can these guys step up? I'm guessing it happens four to seven games. Wow. I'm guessing it happens. All I know I is believe. That <laughs> I've been objective for every day for 13 years on this show. It's time to be subjective. Ah! Rap win, rap <laughs> win, rap win. Well, we'll, see what back. <laughs> well, talk about Giannis's walkout. Don't go anywhere. Let's play a little Is This News. Trey's rounded up some NBA headlines. He's going to pitch them to us like he's 50 cent out on the mound, and we'll determine whether or not they're actually newsworthy. Trey. Our first headline comes from USA Today. Giannis Antetokounmpo walks out on post-game press conference after playoff elimination. If you haven't seen the clip, take a look. Malika Andrews, ESPN. Uh, for both of you guys, I'm curious. You guys have talked a lot about how um, at this point, you know, sometimes it takes experience. I'm wondering if now that you have some of that experience, if you see more validity to that point or what you think about that now that you've gone through it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is this news? It was to uh, Chris Middleton there, yeah. for sure. <laughs> that was the it was like when a couple just has a fight at a restaurant or something, it's like, well, what the hell happened there? <laughs> what do you think, though? Um, news or not? Well, it's news because it looks like he was being a little bit petulant, maybe, and he didn't like the question. Um, and But I think this is in relation to an article that came out just after the, the loss yeah. that Malika had written about Giannis's future with Milwaukee. And I think he was probably just at that moment, he was like, he didn't want to deal with that particular reporter. And so he chose to just walk out. So That's... instead of the uh, no comment from Westbrook type yeah. of vibe, I'll just get up and leave. So you think he was upset specifically with Malika Andrews and the article and not just... I'm over this. I just lost a game six. I've answered enough questions. I'm out of here. See you, Chris. <laughs> or maybe I, a bit of both, even, I guess. I, I think it shows he's Milwaukee through and through. He wants to play for the Milwaukee Bucks. And a line in that article basically said he would think about leaving if they don't make the 2020 NBA Finals. Right, right. So he was angry. Yeah, somebody right. told him. Somebody from PR, I'm sure, after a game, because it was about 50 minutes after the game where he sits down and was told, hey, this article came out. He saw the reporter who wrote it and said... 
I don't think so. Uh, and that just shows how much he loves playing for there, and he has been declarative that he wants to play there. And but you know I've, what? The speculation comes with the territory when you're someone like Giannis. You know, I mean, it happens. It's like people want to know immediately, what are your plans? Are you committing long-term? Right. And, and Again, he's probably frustrated with the timing course, of the whole thing yeah, more course. than anything, right? Yeah. It's like, I just lost. Yep. We thought we were going to the finals after game two, and, you know, we just lost four in a row, and I didn't have the greatest of games. I mean, he's human. I mean, yeah, yeah, no, we, we would all be frustrated, and upset and tired and all that but and his team looks really really strong next season i think they're going to come back with a lot of the same parts you probably lose nikola miritich from that list you say to george hill hey let's cut that uh, 18 mil in half or so and uh and, and move on with the unsigned those other guys this is this is still the number one seed you think we'll see conference. a similar bucks team yeah and uh, yeah and they can make some magic happen yeah mm -hmm. all right try next one our final headline is from Sportsnet by way of Yahoo's Chris Haynes. Kawhi Leonard speaks highly of Toronto, says Uncle Dennis. <laughs> is this news? <laughs> Uncle Dennis. <laughs> Uncle Dennis, an NBA character. Dennis Not Robertson. 3D. Mm, unless uh, you hear it from Kawhi, don't trust anybody, I don't think. Really? You know? I mean, I know, he's, I know he's very close there with Uncle Dennis, but uh, <laughs> you need to hear it from the player himself. And Kawhi doesn't say a lot. Well, even uh, if he speaks highly of Toronto, it doesn't mean he's coming no, back. No, of course, of yeah. course. But uh, right now, obviously, Kawhi's not going to commit to anything while they're still playing in the finals. But what is going to be very interesting to see what happens after that, because I think he's staying. Right. Uh, and you think because they've gone to the finals. Yes, yes, yeah. That, that, that even, even if they, let's say they get sweat, worst case Who's scenario. Who's the homer now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I just think, look, he's, he's gone there, and I think he was probably reluctant to go when he first got traded there. But he's realised perhaps there is a future here. This, the team's going to look different, and, you know, guys like Serge and, and Kyle Lowry, you know, are a little bit older. But if you look at what Masai has done and his ability to get really good talent, I think that will be something that uh, Kawhi really likes. And then when you include the whole, we took care of you yeah, this regular sure. season. You didn't play you know, nearly 25 games because of the load management, yeah. because we wanted you for the postseason. Yep. That's paying off. So you think, I don't know, I've never really believed he's going to stay, but maybe I, I'm riding too high right now. Yeah, Perhaps yeah. in the finals, I can't add that to my plate. <laughs> we'll find out. Hopefully Uncle Dennis is right. When we come back, though, <laughs> Lily. Our Uncle Lee with a very solid play. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Lee speaks highly of very solid play. <laughs> Back with the starters, Smash Mouth, very upset with Drake. <laughs> we had a crazy poll for you today. What do you got here? Drake or Smash Mouth, 59% of people. That's Drake. it? That's it? <laughs> Only 41% for Smash Mouth. Have you never heard Walking on the Sun? Yeah. I guess not. <laughs> I like Classic. That. I like that graphic though. All right, Lee Lee, very solid place. Yeah, back. Yeah, it's obviously got to be the rap center. It's their defense. Look at this defensive possession here. Key moment in the fourth quarter. Everyone just rotating, everyone getting Shoot into it. position. Giannis doesn't does he doesn't want to. He knows he's gonna get mm. stopped, and then Pascal. Yeah, look at this. Oh yeah. Ready to go, oh. Pascal. Oh, that's beautiful defense. That's what I call a very solid defensive play. Very, very nice. Also very solid. We had a drop podcast, recorded it this morning. It's already up on a Monday. Go so download that. Guys, we'll see you tomorrow night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern. Drake got 59%. <laughs> I thought our fans were young. <laughs> Race the night, people.